now we're going to take a look uh, more closely at the normal distribution. Uh, everybody's familiar with the normal distribution bell curve. Everybody's heard of that term. Uh, that's how most of us get through school. We look at what's the curve, what's the bell curve look like. Uh, and we know that because a majority of the numbers are going to be centered around the mean. So here on this uh, graph that you see, we have a mean of zero, and most of the numbers should be around the zero. That's our average. And this is how most of us tell, hey, the mean is an important number, because if it's normally distributed, a majority of the numbers will be uh, located around the mean. And from the previous videos, we saw that that is related to the standard deviation, where 68% of the data points will be located between uh, minus one and positive one standard deviations from the mean. And we'll show that in one of these curves shortly. So the normal distribution is actually what's called a density function. It is basically giving us the probability under the curve of a particular x value. Uh, and that's given by this formula here. Well, it's a good thing uh, we don't have to know the formulas for some of the work that we have to do. It's a little complicated and we have uh, tools that do all this for us. But for those of you who want to take a little closer look at the formula, that's what it looks like. Going back to the normal distribution, however, we see that the numbers are basically, this is a symmetrical curve where we have uh, the same shape of the curve on the left side of the mean as we do to the right side of the mean separated by that uh, dotted line in the center. Now let's suppose that we want to look at um, you know, what these numbers are. These numbers actually represent um, and not the x values, but the y values, uh, the uh, point, the probability of a certain amount occurring under the curve. And remember that we had said that uh, when you have uh, minus one standard deviations to positive one standard deviations, 68% uh, of the numbers would appear uh, close to that mean within one and positive one standard deviations. Well, that's what this curve does. Uh, when we shade the area underneath uh, the curve here, what we find is we find that if you look at the area under the curve from minus one to positive one standard deviations, you would see that this was 68% or 0.683% um, of the curve. So all of this shaded area, this blue shaded area, would be 68% of the curve, and then the remaining 32% uh, would fall on the left and the right side of that, uh, beyond the tails. Now, that's important because as we continue to look at our curves, let's say at a particular point around say 1.96, we want to know exactly what the uh, probability of the curve from that point is to the right. So here we have another normal distribution. We've kind of labeled out where 1.96 is and we draw a vertical line. Where the line intersects there, uh, we're going to look for the area of the curve from that point to the right. When we shade that region in, we see at the top that basically it says from the 1.96 all the way to 1,000, that's actually to infinity, uh, gives you 0.025 or 2.5% of the curve. And so in this tail, uh, you would get 0.25. If you did the same thing on the left side of the curve, uh, you would get another 2.5%. And that would give you a grand total of 5%. And that's why when we look at the uh, tables or when we get our values of 1.96, uh, that is our 5% confidence interval. It represents uh, the area under the curve at the tails. And we could do this with any set of regions uh, within this normal distribution. Now, one thing that's interesting is we can convert this probability density uh, curve here into what's called a cumulative distribution function. If you look at the left, we see that there isn't that much data, so the probability of being to the left of 3 would be very small. And the probability of being left of 2, ne I'm sorry, negative 3, of less than negative 2 would be a little bit bigger, but still small. And if you get to the middle point, 50% of the curve would lie to the left of that. And as we move forward to the right, we get a little bit more than 50% uh, when we start going to the 1, and then a little bit more than that when we get to the 2, until we get all the way to the right, as far as we can go, and that would represent the full 100% of the curve. Well, that's what's called a cumulative distribution function. So in the cumulative distribution, we see the probabilities, uh, how they line up with the various values. So when we said negative four was a very low probability, cumulative probability, that was about zero. 
as we started to increase the numbers to negative 2 and negative 1, we see that basically we're adding more of the cumulative probability to it. When you get to 0, right, uh, it joins the curve, uh, that 0 and the curve join up around 0.5. So everything to the left is about 50% of the curve. And as you continue moving right, you start adding more and more of the probabilities. And so therefore, you're going to slowly start increasing to 60%, 70%, 80%, all the way until you get to 100%. And that's what this CDF, or cumulative distribution function, looks like.